get ready because today we're going to talk about what separates bad prologues from good ones. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm the author of Bad Parts and Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. So a couple months ago I did a video on bad dialogue versus good dialogue, and a lot of my viewers love this video, especially the format, basically what I did, I explained how to write dialogue, then I gave some examples of bad dialogue, and I explained why they sucked, and then I gave examples of good dialogue, and I talked about why those worked. And a lot of people love this format, but because I'm an idiot, I didn't think to actually revisit the format again until today. And we're going to be talking about prologues today. One of my subscribers requested this video. So uh, we're going to talk about prologues. And first off, I want to say right up front that there is nothing wrong with writing a prologue. There is nothing wrong with including a prologue in your story. There are a lot of people out there who give writing advice, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's industry professionals or just you know college professors, whoever it may be. A lot of people out there seem to think that these prologues are terrible things and they should never be included in your stories. But the good news is you don't have to listen to these people. And if you feel your story needs a prologue, include it. If you feel you can write a good prologue, include it. And that's the key thing to remember. As long as you write a good prologue, you can get away with it. Anyway, just so we're all on the same page, what a prologue is, it's an opening scene or sequence of scenes that prepares the audience for the main story. Typically, a prologue is going to feel a little disconnected from the main story. That's because prologues usually take place outside of the regular context of the book. They may take place many years before the events of the story, or they may take place in the future, or they may be from the point of view of a character that we don't get to see again in the book, or they may involve world building, backstory, info dump and it just might feel different from the rest of the story. And this is why a lot of people don't like prologues because they just feel disconnected from the story. But as far as I know, prologues didn't stop people from watching Game of Thrones or reading Harry Potter or watching any number of movies that include them. So the important thing to remember is that you can get away with a prologue. You just have to write a good prologue. And what good prologues do, they do a number of different things. You don't have to do all of these things in your prologue, but it helps if you can do some of them. Some things that good prologues do, they set the tone, especially when the opening of your main story can't set the tone. Think about John Wick. It opens up with that prologue where we see him battered and bloody, and we get a sense that this is going to be a gritty, nasty movie. But the actual story opens up with him at his wife's funeral, and if we just opened with that, we'd get the sense right off the bat that, okay, the tone of this story is going to be dark and depressing rather than dark and exciting. So sometimes it helps if you could stick a prologue in front of your main story just to hint at what the tone is going to be. Another thing good prologues do, they establish the genre when the opening of the main story can't do this. And this is what Game of Thrones does. Game of Thrones is, of course, a fantasy story, and most of the early episodes of the show are gritty realism without much fantasy elements. So in order to send the message that this is, in fact, a fantasy story, the show opens up with a scene where we get some fantasy, some supernatural elements. Another thing good prologues do, they convey necessary info that must be known prior to the main story. Things like world building details, backstory details, and so on. And what they especially do, they do this through showing us a scene. They don't just dump this info on this, but they actually show action going on, characters interacting, things happening. Another thing good prologues do, they introduce or reintroduce characters who will factor into the story, whether it's your protagonist, your villain, or side characters. The movie Halloween is a great example of this. It opens up with a prologue where we get to see the story through the eyes of a young child, and we see this child murder somebody. And that child, of course, ends up being Michael Myers, who is the main villain in the main story. And then finally, the last thing that good prologues do, they don't overstay their welcome. One of the major complaints people have about prologues is that they go on for too long, they spend too much time indulging in world building details or things like that. You want to keep your prologues short and sweet and to the point, and you want to just thrust us right into the heart of the story. Now we're going to talk about bad prologues, and there are a lot of bad prologues out there, especially in books, but for this video, I'm going to focus on movies since it's something I can actually show you on the screen. And the first type of bad prologue is one that establishes the wrong tone. Sometimes writers will get cute at the beginning of the story and they'll try to send a, a happy message when they're actually trying to tell a dark story or they'll send like a dark message when they're actually trying to tell a lighthearted story. And 
it just kind of gets the audience prepared for the wrong thing. So when you are trying to establish the tone of your story, remember that you want to get that first impression right. Now a bad example of setting the tone comes from the movie Justice League, the theatrical cut. And if you're not familiar with Justice League, it's a superhero epic. All the DC comic book heroes get together to battle evil, that sort of stuff. And this movie has some high stakes. It's about protecting people. It's about saving the world. But you wouldn't know that from the prologue of this story. And the prologue opens up with a couple of kids interviewing Superman on a cell phone. Superman, can we ask you some questions? It's for our podcast. Well, in that case. How many people that you say have you saved? Wait, I... Never mind. Does your thing really stand for hope? Yes, it does. But it looks like an S. What is, um, what's the best thing about planet Earth? So this prologue sucks because the tone is all over the place. It's childish, it's awkward, it's a little creepy, it's confusing. I'm not sure how to feel about this movie after watching that prologue. Like, why are the kids interviewing Superman? That's the question in my mind. Like, what are we watching? Is, is this supposed to be a superhero epic? Or is this going to be some kind of made-for-kids movie? I don't know how to feel about that going into this movie. And I think the inconsistency of the tone right up front really hurts this movie from the start. And that's without even talking about the bad CGI on Superman's face. Now, on the other hand, a good example of establishing the tone comes from the director's cut of Justice League. And this has a different prologue opening up for it, and I'll play it for you right now. Just be aware it's going to be a shortened up version for the sake of this video. So this prologue works because it opens up with a strong and consistent tone. It's dark and severe. No words are spoken. And the movie opens with the death of Superman and we see its impact on those around him. People like Lois Lane and Wonder Woman and Batman. And we're left to wonder, wow, how are we going to go on without Superman? How are the other superheroes going to rally now that he's dead? Is there going to be a chance where there's supervillains seizing this opportunity while Superman is gone? A lot of dark thoughts can go through our heads as we're witnessing this moment and wondering what comes next. And it's all because the tone is established properly. The second type of bad prologue is one that establishes the wrong genre. When you tell a story, your opening scene should establish the genre. If you're writing a fantasy story, you better include some fantasy elements. If you're writing a thriller, you better include some thrills. But if you don't establish the genre, or if you establish the wrong genre, you're going to send the wrong message to your audience. One bad example of this comes from Zack Snyder's movie Army of the Dead. And Army of the Dead starts off with a prologue that shows us a convoy of military vehicles transporting some dangerous cargo right outside of Las Vegas. And of course the cargo is a zombie and meanwhile there's a pair of newlyweds who are driving along that exact same highway and they decide to engage in some roadhead because why not? And of course they crash into the lead military vehicle which causes this absurd accident and the zombie gets loose and starts killing people. Now based on this prologue you would probably think that this would be a story of survival or maybe even a story of the army of the living going up against the army of the dead. But that's not even close to the actual genre of this story. Believe it or not, Army of the Dead is about a group of mercenaries who take a job to go into a zombie-infested Las Vegas and recover $200 million from an underground casino vault. It's a heist movie, and you would never know it from the opening scene. Usually when you have a heist movie, like something like Baby Driver or Widows, you open up with a heist scene, and that signals to the audience that, hey, guess what? This is a heist movie, and there's going to be more of this stuff later on. If you like this, you're going to love the rest of the movie. But Army of the Dead does not do this. It focuses too hard on the origin of the outbreak when it should be focusing on the genre of the story. If this movie opened up with a scene where you had people trying to steal the zombie from some underground laboratory or something like that, that would work. However, this movie does not do that. Now, a good example of using a prologue to establish the genre comes from A Quiet Place. And this is, of course, a post-apocalyptic horror story about a family trying 
trying to live their lives in a world where if you make any noise at all, you will be killed. And this story opens up with a prologue where we get to see the family making a simple trip to the store, and on their way home, the youngest child activates a toy space shuttle, and it makes some noise, and it ultimately gets him killed. And this establishes right up front that this story is one of survival, and that's what we get for the rest of the movie. It works because it's honest with us from the start, and we know what we're getting into. The third type of bad prologue is the boring info dump. I'm sure you've seen these in books. They also appear in movies from time to time. What they are, it's just an opening that beats the readers to death with a ton of unnecessary information. A bad example of this comes from the 2005 movie Alone in the Dark. And Alone in the Dark is just a horrendous movie. It's about as fun as a child's funeral, and you really get a taste of what you're getting into from the prologue, which is this 90 second long text scroll that's read by a monotone narrator. In 1967, mine workers discovered the first remnants of a long lost Native American civilization, the Apkani. Hudgens' victims survived as sleepers, lost souls awaiting the moment of their calling. This sucks because film is a visual medium, not a text medium. People don't go to the movies to read text off a screen. If you're showing a movie, you gotta be showing action. You gotta be showing things going on in the story. And the same applies to books as well. If you are giving a prologue, there should be a scene here. It shouldn't just be an info dump about the history of the world. Now, a good example of a prologue that includes an info dump comes from Terminator 1. And this is an exciting prologue. We get to see a future war. We get to see some action going on, some lasers being fired, some skulls being crushed. There's a lot of cool things going on here, and we also get a short ominous message that sets the stage for what's to come. This prologue works because it's visually striking, and it gets us excited about the story before we're given the info dump. I'll also give it some bonus points for setting the tone and also setting the genre, which is sci-fi and time travel. The fourth type of bad prologue is the useless origin story. And a lot of writers fear that their audience won't like their main character unless they get the main character's backstory right up front. Unless they see why the main character turned out the way they did. And I got news for you. If you're a writer and you can't make your main character interesting or likable in the present day, you're in trouble. Now, a bad example of this comes from the movie Batman vs. Superman. And this opens up with an origin story we've seen a million times and we don't need to see again. It's the death of the Waynes, Bruce Wayne being there when his parents are murdered, and yes, this version of the story is certainly stylish, but it tells us nothing new about the character. It doesn't even change the story that we've seen a million times before. And the only reason that it's really here is just so this can be uttered. Martha. Honestly, Batman vs. Superman would have been perfectly well off if it started with the scene where Bruce Wayne is running through Metropolis, saving people, doing heroic things while Superman's battle is causing all sorts of death and destruction. That would have been a fine opening scene. Now, if you want a good example of a prologue that includes an origin story, take a look at Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. This opens with a prologue where we get to see an iconic character's origin, and this is an origin story that we haven't seen before. We get to see Indy as a boy, he's stealing a valuable artifact from some grave robbers, and he has to try and escape their pursuit, and in the process we see how he develops his fear of snakes, how he came to first use a bullwhip, and finally toward the end we get to see him rush home to his father who will have an important impact on the main story. We also see that his father prioritizes research over his son, and we get to see the lead robber of the gang acting as a sort of father figure in the moment where he gives Indy his hat. And this shows how Indy became both an academic and an adventurer, and this scene works because it does such a great job establishing an important character, Indy's father, and it also establishes the relationship between Indy and his father. And finally, it tells us some things that we didn't know about Indy and helps us understand his character. The fifth type of bad prologue is the bloated prologue. And this is a prologue that is simply too long. Prologues should not be long and drawn out. They should be fast and to the point, and they should thrust us into the main story. Now, a bad example of this comes from, well, 
Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That's right, right after I said all those nice things about it, now I'm gonna shit on it. And that's because Last Crusade's prologue is simply too long. It takes place over the course of 13 minutes, which is more than 10% of the movie's runtime. That is a lot of time to devote to a prologue. And the problem I have with it is that, well, it is cool to see young Indiana Jones and how he developed his fear of snakes and all that other good stuff. The main thing that we need to get out of this prologue is the relationship between Indy and his father. I think you could have cut it down and I think it would have been stronger if it had not been 13 minutes. And I know this because when I was a kid I watched this movie a thousand times and almost every time I watched it I would skip the prologue and just jump right to the Harrison Ford parts. So that's something to keep in mind. Always keep your prologues as short as you can. And a good example of this comes from the movie Goldfinger. And this is the third James Bond movie and this crams everything you need to know about James Bond into a suspenseful five minute opening sequence. It's got infinite Filtration. It's got gadgets, suspense, style, seduction, action, betrayal, and it even ends with a little bit of humor. Shocking. But the best part about this whole thing, it's quick. It sets the tone and genre of the story while reestablishing an iconic character, and it does it all in less than five minutes. So I hope this helps. And if you want to see more videos like this, more in this format of bad versus good, let me know in the comments section below. I have some ideas for bad versus good endings, bad versus good character introductions, and a few other things. But if you have some ideas of your own, please share them with me. I'd be happy to do more videos like this. Question of the day, what is your favorite prologue from a story? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, pick up a copy of either of my books, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, share this video with a friend, and as always, remember to keep on writing.